Good afternoon. This is Danny Zaslavsky with VinQ and Country Hill Motors. And uh, I'm excited that you guys are here. We're going to take just a few minutes to let folks uh, join, but we're going to be talking today about what the day, uh, a day in the life of a vehicle buying center agent looks like. So uh, at any point, um, I encourage you please to uh, go into the comments and uh, ask any questions that you want to ask. And then also at any point, you can reach out directly to me, uh, contact at dealerq.com, or you can reach out to your performance manager if uh, you have any questions related to any of the things that uh, I shared today. So if you're just joining, uh, do me a favor and uh, uh, in the comments, just let me know what dealership you're with so um, I can see who's joining us. And then uh, just remind you, you can ask any questions, but we're gonna hang out here just for a few moments to let folks join. And uh, again, today we're gonna be talking about what the day in the life of a BBC agent looks like and uh, what they should be focusing on and how they are getting opportunities uh, and then converting those opportunities to purchases. So, okay, well, let's get started. So today we're talking about a day in the life of a BBC agent. And for those of you that have an established vehicle buying center at your car dealership, we're going to talk about what are the different ways you can set that up and who your VBC agents are reporting to. And for those of you that don't have one, we're going to talk about how to begin um, so that we can make sure your folks are using their time in the best possible way. So I'd like to start with this slide. And this kind of demonstrates the different ways a vehicle buying center can be set up at your store. So traditionally, you can have a person um, that uh, is in charge of doing the appraisals and usually that's a used car manager. That person knows how to appraise a car and they can make the acquisition if need be. And you can incentivize your sales team and say, hey, we'll pay 200, 300, I've even heard stores paying $500 per acquisition um, and drive leads to your store that way. But I will tell you that is a pretty ineffective way to do that. So what we want is for you to consider having a dedicated person who is buying cars from the public. And that's where we're gonna be focusing our time today within the system and how they should be utilizing their time. Now, one of the first lessons is here. For those agents that are making those acquisitions, uh, the differentiator really is, are they able to do an appraisal or not? And if they are able to do an appraisal, we still wanna be able to give them uh, a, a wing person, right? And that wing person may be a used car sales manager that is uh, approving that appraisal and or their uh, person that they can go to on a TO when they're working those. Uh, or if the vehicle buying center agent can't do an appraisal, they can still utilize the software to get close and the used car manager has the ability to, to now go on the back end of VinQ and dial in how he wants those appraisals to fall, whether it be cost to market, price to market, or really any indicators that that store is using in order to identify the right price range of an acquisition. So we can talk about that a little bit more, but that's also something that you can ask your um, uh, uh, performance rep on how to curate those numbers. Now, the best scalable option is to have a dedicated VBC. That's where you have vehicle buying center agents. Um, and here's where we start to get into KPIs. And so I'm gonna to transition to uh, something that you can get from me by reaching out to contact at dealerq.com or you can ask your performance manager. So the first thing here is a job description. So when you are um, uh, either hiring or uh, deciding to take one of your existing agents, maybe they were, came from a BDC background, uh, and putting them into a position uh, that they're now the vehicle buying center uh, agent. Here is an example of a good job description. And we can send you this and so that you can go over it with them. But uh, I wanna jump straight to pay first because I think incentive drives behavior. And here you'll notice there's a base pay of blank 
that could be two thousand or three thousand dollars a month and that can be set in either a set salary or it can be an hourly rate that equates to that then the commission that's paid per car purchased goes here right so we pay a hundred dollars per car acquired and that's assuming they do the whole deal in our vehicle buying center because we have several agents split deals do happen every once in a while if an agent um, isn't available to help uh, and, and in those cases we track that but we pay a hundred dollars per car approved now something to notice right here in a traditional BDC setting uh, we're really used to either compensating and or me measuring the amount of calls connections appointments shows and then sales or in our case acquisitions uh, and if you notice uh, per this job description we're not using calls as a KPI and the reason is is because with acquisition a majority of your opportunities are coming through inbound opportunities so they're the, that means they're coming to you and we'll talk about how that works and then outbound where you're reaching out to them but those are leads still in the system um, and or service drive leads or potentially even trade leads that you're then transitioning over to trade so if you need a job description for your VBC agent, we have that available for you. And uh, you can just ask your performance manager and we'll send that to you. Now, if you've grown to the size where you are now um, uh, have a, a VBC manager who's in charge of this, maybe this is even a sales manager who's partially, uh, who, whose job it is to uh, uh, partially manage the vehicle buying center. This is one of the ways that uh, we feel is a strong way to incentivize them. So obviously the salary stays the same uh, of, of a base salary as the VBC agents. Now the per units per month purchased changes to a smaller amount on the department because the whole idea is to grow the department. The one that I think is the most important and this, is, this starts playing into when you start identifying what vehicles you should be purchasing for your store, not just, hey, we're gonna buy um, everything that comes through the door, but start curating the inventory from an outbound perspective, is a percentage of front end gross per month on VBC sold inventory. So our managers get paid a percentage of the profit that we make when those vehicles that were purchased by the vehicle buying center actually sell. And so that takes a little bit of tracking but I can tell you the pearl is worth the dive because um, then you start looking at things like churn and you start looking at things uh, like gross per copy, uh, especially in contrast to relative to other acquisition channels being uh, wholesale, dealer network, uh, trade, and so forth. And you'll uh, see if you're doing it right that vehicle buying ends up being your number one or number two uh, 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 turn and gross per copy source. So as we dive in a little bit, let's start here with what we like to refer to as our onboarding docs. And uh, let me zoom in so we can see this. So having a good job description for your VBC agent is critical because that's where your KPIs are coming from. Now, one of the goals here isn't to measure necessarily how many calls they're making, but how many appointments they're being are set and how many acquisitions. Those are the two KPIs that we want to look at. How many appointments are being set and then how many acquisitions are being made. That ladders up obviously to the VBC manager um, and then those should tie directly to the pay plans. If you have questions about how to track any of this stuff, um, uh, please ask in the comments and we can spend some time on it. Otherwise, your performance manager can tell you how to have uh, that in the DMS reporting and even CRM set up if you're using a CRM uh, for any of this tracking. We have all that ability to uh, API with Fin Solutions and, and other CRM so that we can make sure that the communication is clear. Okay, so let's talk about the fun stuff, which is what is it like to be a day in the life of a VBC agent? So I'm going to open up the screen that everybody should be used to seeing by now. So this is our inbound leads. And so I call these swim lanes or, or track lanes, but you can call them 
whatever you want. In this case, we're looking at our inbound opportunities. I put a couple test leads in here so that I can play with them, but these are opportunities that are coming in. And so when an agent um, gets assigned one of these opportunities, either by round robin or because a manager assigned it, they only see the opportunities that were assigned to them, right? And so Lorenzo here came in with a 17 Silverado 1500 LT. We can see that we've already made him an offer. Um, so the first thing that the agent's gonna wanna do is appraise the car. Once they appraise the vehicle, we uh, will be able to open it. And from here, uh, uh, the VBC offer lives uh, right here. And if you notice, we're missing a VIN number. And often consumers don't provide us VIN numbers when giving us their vehicle information. So this is a good opportunity uh, uh, for a connection point or to ask a question because that way we can provide a better offer, right? So uh, the agent should go into the VBC offer. We can see that um, we have their email and their cell phone and I can just text them right here and say, uh, hey there, uh, would you mind providing me your uh, VIN number so uh, I can give you a better offer, right, is one of the questions. Now, because this is a test lead, uh, one of the best practices we didn't talk about is the introduction. You obviously want to introduce yourself um, as the, the buying person because this consumer, Lorenzo, has already given you their information, so they already know, so you want to establish connection, uh, share your name, and then uh, ask them for that VIN number. They'll send you the VIN number. You can just uh, drag and drop it or, or copy and paste it right here. And then um, these direct purchase numbers are coming from um, a setting within VinQ. So let me actually jump to that real quick so you can see that. Um, and then we'll go right back to um, that, cons that consumer. So if you see, we go into our settings. Uh, oops, I'm sorry. We go into our dealer settings. And under buying center, we now have the ability to change how much reconditioning should be applied, how much margin should be applied, um, what the range manipulation should be as far as how tight or how high um, on the low end and on the high end of the range. So for instance, if a car uh, was given a 22, a 20 to $22,000 price range, uh, when appraising that vehicle automatically, um, we can be more aggressive so the price to market is higher or the cost to market is higher and we can tighten the range on the high side so then they end up getting a value range within, call it maybe $500. Or if you go aggressive, conservative or tight, then they'll get a wider range of maybe $3,000. And you have control over that across different price buckets as well. And that's what this represents here. So as a manager, you have the ability to set how you want your automatic uh, appraisals going out so that your um, vehicle buying center team has a higher opportunity to acquire the vehicles at the range that you want to be purchasing them for. So if we go back to Lorenzo, there's a couple ways for me to get to Lorenzo. I can click right on uh, the image and here I can see the chat and then I could also go into the appraisal. I can click and see the offer that uh, uh, Lorenzo sent and we can see what was sent and then we can scroll down to the bottom and remember these transactions are also here. Now the agent uh, should be asking out of the gate once they have the, the VIN number, what their motivators are for selling the car. And this is really going to drive the rest of the conversation. And I'll give you an example. So let me close that. So as they're working it, the goal is to set an appointment with the customer to bring it in, right? But we only want to do that if we know we have a high probability of buying the car. And so uh, everybody's heard of digital retailing and everybody's heard of multi-channel uh, marketing. What we want to talk about today is digital acquisition in a multi-channel uh, uh, connect uh, uh, communication way, right? So first question is uh, to the consumer when chatting with them, uh, is texting a good way for us to continue talking or would you like me to call you? 
that should shape the way that the rest of the communication goes. If the consumer says, no, nope, call me because uh, I'd like to talk, maybe that person is, is better over the phone and that way we're not just assuming and driving them crazy by texting, uh, then we have a higher opportunity to make a deal or set an appointment. If the consumer says they want to text, sounds good. The next question should be, uh, can you let me know why you're selling the car? This is really going to drive the rest of the conversation because if they say um, we're trying to get out of debt, right, or they say that um, I want to replace the vehicle, I don't need it anymore, I, I need it, I, I no longer need a truck in this case of the Silverado, um, then that begs the question. That's great, no problem. Um, have you ever have you, have you already identified what you're going to be replacing it with? And if it turns out that they have not, there's an opportunity to and turn them into a trade deal, right? All that comes from identifying the motivators. And this is something we talk about in our vehicle buying center all the time. Uh, so that way, when the vehicle buying center agents are having a conversation with the consumer, we're working to solve their problems instead of just uh, solving our own, which is to make that acquisition. And so once we know what those motivators are, whether just they're trying to uh, get out of debt, whether they're trying to uh, obviously just get the cash out of the vehicle, their husband or wife is tired of looking at it in the garage, whatever that is, we use that to drive the rest of the conversation and move on to um, any obstacles that uh, we know might exist in that in that acquisition. And keep in mind, a majority of this done is is done digitally. So the next question is, is there a payoff on the vehicle? Um, and if there is a payoff, um, sometimes, assuming we have the rapport with the consumer, we can ask, uh, do you know who the payoff is through and, uh, and, and for how much? Be careful asking this question because the consumer can feel like you're getting into their pockets right away. Um, but if you frame it correctly because your, uh, your dealership is an asset, in making payoffs and doing lien releases and doing all the paperwork that consumers are often um, uh, fearful of doing because they don't know where the paperwork lives and and uh, it may be complicated then as long as we can position position it as an asset and we can help them uh, uh, finish that goal then the uh, consumer is excited to be able to share that information now once uh, the only other obstacle to overcome that the uh, a VBC agent should be considering is value. And so the value that the system generated for the consumer um, may not be the value that the consumer wants. And so the VBC agent should be asking, uh, what did you think of the value that we sent you? Um, and the uh, consumer may say, well, uh, the top end number was $26,000 and that's the lowest I would take for the vehicle that at least establishes a value. And so in, uh, in the system here, if you notice, you have the ability to take a note. So if you click add note, that's something that uh, the VBC agent should be capture capturing. Um, so uh, 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 Lorenzo shared that uh, 26,000 is the lowest he would take. There is no payoff on the uh, on the truck, and then we'll just go ahead and add that note. And so that note now will exist with that vehicle file from now on. So once we know that, we can go into the appraisal, and this is where um, uh, and you can see there's there's that note captured, um, and we can see that uh, from the value of the car. ACV, the system is is imagining that it should be worth around 32 to 36. So this is a, this is a no brainer. We should absolutely be going after this vehicle. So the the next question we have is um, are is there anything wrong with the vehicle? Is there anything mechanically or cosmetically uh, that we should know about it? Uh, again, if we had a VIN number, we'd be able to see the vehicle Carfax and, and how it decodes right here in the system. But since we don't, this is again a great uh, opportunity for some conversation. And once uh, the consumer agrees the, that the value, your value and their value is close enough to be able to uh, uh, set an appointment, then we'll go ahead and uh, set the appointment and or you can always send them an updated offer. So if you notice here, we give you the ability to start typing um, right into the field. So we'll say it's worth 
twenty-five to twenty-six thousand dollars, and on trade they can get uh, twenty-seven five to twenty-eight thousand, and uh, we'll leave private party out of it and any notes that we want to send the customer, and then I can save it, and then I can send that offer right to the consumer, which is, uh, and then uh, once we send it, you'll notice we capture that offer, and so forever, it's gonna live right here in the system so that you can go back to it uh, in case the consumer comes back in a week or two weeks, and uh, obviously search for that customer and, uh, um, and pick up where you left off. So back in the system, you'll notice that we can now see that it's updated with an offer for $26,000. Something we haven't done yet is ACV the car. Now this is where the agent and the manager uh, should be touching base with each other because if you've set an appointment for that consumer to come in, uh, the manager can take a look at this and go, you know what, um, this is a really nice vehicle and the guy seems to be tripping all over himself only wanting $26,000 for the car. Really, it's worth $30,000 and uh, unless there's something we don't know about it. And so we'll go ahead and save that. And so that authorizes the VBC agent uh, to go up to 30,000 if it's a really nice vehicle, uh, because regardless, we don't wanna miss out on that car. And you can see now it'll update to a $30,000 ACV. So that is um, uh, one of the inbound processes that a VBC agent should be focusing on when working these leads. I'm gonna pause for a second and see if there's any questions that anybody has here uh, before we get into uh, Kelly Blue Book ICO leads and outbounds. Okay, if you have any questions, um, you can put them right into the comments here, or you can always reach out, contact at dealerq.com, uh, or reach out to your performance manager at any time. So something that I wanna bring up just from last time when we talked, you guys uh, have access to any of our training docs. So last time we talked about best practices, best practices included, uh, worksheets like this, which is our Vehicle Buying Center inspection form, and um, then uh, also the exit interview. Uh, so this was the intake, that's, this is the uh, when they leave. Brian, I see your note. I'm going to um, uh, share that with you just in a second. And then also you have payoff and uh, BBC manager and agent uh, uh, job descriptions as well. Okay, so Brian, you asked, how are stores using the VBC with VIN Solutions? That's a great question. So if you look up here, I've got uh, VIN Solutions open. So if you want to use VIN Solutions for the CRM, you can absolutely do that. And there's a number of ways to integrate. So the first thing, and I'll open up VIN Solutions here, is to identify your acquisition opportunities and mark them wholesale. So what you do, and let's go ahead and click wholesale here, and we'll do just month to date and refresh. And so what you do is within the settings of VIN Solutions, you would identify all the lead providers that you have by name um, that you consider an acquisition opportunity, right? That's number one. Number two, when they come in, they're falling into wholesale, right? And you can see type wholesale. And then you'll start seeing them listed here. Now, um, I believe that uh, CRM is a little bit of a lagging indicator. So what I mean by that is within VinQ, the lead comes in and you're working it, you're, act, you're actively um, going back and forth with the consumer and communicating. And then we have it set up so then Vin Solutions will capture all that information and keep it here. The reason we do that is so in the future, when you wanna do uh, uh, campaigns to anybody you've ever either bought a car from or uh, got an offer to buy a car from. You can do service campaigns, sales campaigns, acquisition campaigns, whatever. So you're still capturing those, right? But then in here, there's some process attached to these. So, and so let's, let's look in the example of 
um, Lorenzo. Let me see if I can pull him up. Lorenzo. So we can stay on the same one. Oh, that was a different one. So let's, let me just go back and we'll pick one of the wholesale ones. Okay, so we'll pick a, um, a KVB one, for example. So within Vin Solutions, um, you do have opportunities. Once they fall into a wholesale uh, process, now check this out. So we'll, Justin Park also lives in KBB. So Brian, you're asking like, how do the two work? So we, VinQ and can, once you, you can set it up, there's no additional cost, uh, ingest all of the Kelly Blue Book instant cash offers. The reason we do that is so that we can instantly appraise them, instantly see what the consumer was offered and then begin communicating right away. But then in Vin Solutions, if you choose to manage it here, if you notice, we have a status of buying center leads, okay? And then within buying center, you can have process attached to it, but you've got uh, different uh, markers here. VBC working means that you're actively working that lead. VBC three day is a three day process, meaning we gave them an offer and now we're just waiting to see if they'll sell us the car and we're actively communicating with them in the meantime. VBC trade is the VBC agent identified as a motivator from the consumer that they might want to trade. And so we market the trade and then we uh, attach a salesperson to it and begin helping to work with them. VBC slow roll is a process where we want to slow the deal down, maybe because they have a title issue or there's something going on where we want to make sure that um, we can slow the deal down. And then VBC refused is if the tower refused the deal. Um, we like to track that. Now, keep in mind, all of this is set up to be reportable. So then at the end of the month, we can see how many we have in either status and how many and, and how many we've purchased and all that kind of stuff. This is assuming you want to work this in Vin Solutions. Otherwise, you can just track it in Vin Solutions, but use VinQ to um, do all the, all the actual physicality of it. And so, for instance, um, let's open up Dirk Mason. Here's a vehicle that we do want. This is a live uh, customer on a 2015 GLK. If I click on the vehicle, um, we, we can look at the lead and we can see that they were offered 15,735 for the car. And um, I haven't set an appointment yet and we haven't even chatted with the customer yet, but I have his telephone number and I can go ahead and reach out and say, hey, this is Danny with Country Hill Motors and uh, your vehicle came to us because we're an official vehicle buying center for Kelly Blue Book. Uh, you were offered 15.7, is, um, uh, is that in line with what you wanted? And then we can start communicating back and forth. As a manager, uh, we can assign it to any one of our agents um, in case you have this, this is uh, a manager's view, or you can um, uh, obviously pick up the phone and uh, talk to the consumer and then just add a note here in the system. And then this will follow uh, uh, VIN solutions so that we're always tracking uh, with the same data. Brian, does that help answer your question? I know there's more to it there, but um, uh, the, we can certainly have an offline conversation about it too, but uh, your performance manager can do some of the setup with you if you like uh, working it through the CRM. Cool. All right. So in here, something that um, is, uh, since we're in Kelly Blue Book, let's start talking about it from a VBC agent's perspective. So something that we know is Kelly Blue Book, if you're a vehicle buying center for them, um, provides a lot of opportunities. And awesome. Thanks, Brian. Um, because they provide a lot of opportunities, unfortunately, not all those opportunities uh, or a majority of them end up being consumers that are just trying to figure out what the vehicle's worth. Um, uh, maybe they wrecked it. Um, maybe it's a kid playing on the computer and looking at his parents car because they think it's cool and they want to know what it's worth. We get all of that. And so the conversion ends up being low, like four to six percent. And so the goal is to have a higher converting uh, opportunity, right? And so one of the ways we can do that is we can automate the uh, uh, what we call a reoffer. 
So once they fall into here, remember you can go in, uh, the VBC agent or the manager can go into the settings within VinQ and uh, adjust how they want offers to fall and you can run 10 or five or 50 of your own sample offers to make sure that you're happy that it's in line. And then uh, we can set it so that this consumer within five or 10 or 20 minutes, whatever you decide, will get a message from Country Hill Motors that says, hey, we're a certified vehicle buying center for Kelly Blue Book, and we know you were offered 15.7 for the car, but we think it's worth up to 16.2. Um, uh, so if that's closer to what you were asking, uh, we'd love to talk to you. Something along that line, you can tailor that message, right? And then within VinQ, uh, because we have these inventory management insights, we can see, and the agent can see, hey, look, we need two of these cars. So this is something we should pay attention to. Beyond that, it looks like we got a history bulletin on it. Now, it's not a vehicle history bulletin, it's a pricing history. So it looks like, you know, here we are in August, this uh, consumer purchased it from Oaks Mitsubishi back in uh, January, and uh, they had it listed online for 17000 in January. So that's pretty good information to know when talking to the consumer and saying, hey, how long have you had this car? Well, I, I bought it in January. Okay, cool. Well, why are you selling it? Well, I don't need uh, a fancy Mercedes anymore. I, I want to get something different. I need something bigger for my family. Okay, fantastic. Um, have you bought that something else yet or are you looking for that now? No, I'm looking for it now. Cool. Motivator, they need a car, switch to trade, introduce them to a salesperson and keep rolling. Or no, uh, I do want to sell it. Excellent. Um, uh, how much uh, are you trying to get out of it and do you owe any money on it? Yeah, um, I just bought it in uh, uh, January and I think I owe around $15,000 for the car. Cool. Well, you're in luck because we think the car is worth around 16000 and then, um, uh, and, and even if they say, oh my gosh, no, I wanted 18 or 19, um, at some point you do have the data to see that the, it was listed online at Oaks Mitsubishi for 17, and that's, that's real data. So um, we know within reason that they didn't pay more than $17,000 for the car, and if they did, it's because they bought uh, products like uh, warranty or gap, which is all cancelable, right? So those are all conversations that we can have. So back in here, when we're having that conversation, again, uh, understanding the motivator for uh, getting rid of the car is important, but understanding what channel of communication the consumer wants to take, whether it's text or phone uh, or in person, is important because then uh, the agent should put that note uh, into the system here and uh, at any point they can update the offer and resend an offer so that we can see what the last offer was sent and what the ACV of the car was. Okay, I'm going to take a quick pause and see if there are any uh, questions before we go on to uh, looking at um, some cool data to be able to share with consumers. Okay, let's keep going. So one of the other motivators that we like to ask the consumer is, um, is around value. And consumers often um, will have their value basis coming from different places. Meaning, if you say, well, how did you come up with $18,000 as what you think you want out of the car? And they'll say, well, I owe seventeen eight, And you go, okay, cool. So their value is based on getting out of debt. Or, nope, that's what uh, J.D. Power said it's worth um, because they're saying, you know, retail is nineteen four, and and I think it's still worth at least 18000 and gives you the chance to make 1500 bucks on it, and I think that's fair. Okay, cool. Pin that for a second because we're going to talk about that. Now, you can see all of your book values uh, live on the right here, and uh, what information the consumer can't get is transactional data whether it be either wholesale, uh, retail live inventory, or sales data. And this is an opportunity to share that with the consumer. So if, if you uh, wanted to, you can go into uh, the auction right here by clicking the auction 
and, and you can actually send them either screenshots or and, and show them what other vehicles like it are listed for online that you have access to get through the wholesale market. If done uh, kindly, this is a great way to kind of level the playing field and say, look, our boss doesn't really let us buy any uh, thing uh, 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 for more money than what we can get it for on our own through the auction. And so let, let me show you a few things I see. Can you tell me if your vehicle is similar? The other thing you can look at, and the consumer can see this, and you can send them links to them, are other cars listed online. Now, keep in mind, these are cars that are listed at dealerships, which means that they've been reconditioned, they've been um, uh, warrantied, certified, and money has been spent on them, plus there's profit built into them. And so if they're asking anywhere near what a dealer's asking, uh, like for instance, in this case, Percy Toyota has one for 18.9, and your consumer may want 18, you can send them a link to this car and say, you know what, um, uh, we can't get close to that, uh, and let me show you why. You might consider uh, lowering your price. The other thing is sales history, and we probably use this the most. Uh, sales history are what are cars leaving the internet for? And so our agents are looking at this vehicle relative to what the prices are on like inventory. And you can click on any one of these, right, to make a little list of your own that you can send to the consumer and say, hey, look at these three or four or five cars that are listed for roughly what you want them. Uh, and they're, excuse me, they're not listed, they're leaving the internet. This is with a sales price. Um, so that's why we're able to offer you, call it 16000 because we want to be able to service and warranty your car and still make a little bit of money. This allows you to build a respectable case when making that acquisition, and you can see all that data here. And then all your communication, boom, right there in the BBC offer, kind of going back and forth. Again, this goes back to um, how comfortable are you with your VBC agent and your manager. And uh, it's important that we always level up our VBC agents because they want to have uh, meaningful connections. Because remember what their pay plan is attached to. It's having meaningful connections um, in setting those appointments and making those acquisitions. Calls, the number of calls that you make. Um, uh, isn't important to us. We don't care if you make 100 calls in a day. We want to know that you made 15 quality connections and set uh, 10 appointments and bought five cars. That is a good day uh, because you've spent the time to uh, share with the consumer what the real value of the car is. You're abolishing any fears that they might have around um, uh, making payoffs and, and making the actual purchase of the car so you can do it for them. All that kind of stuff uh, is an asset of, uh, from a dealer to a consumer. So we just have a, a few minutes left and I want to see if there's any questions here. The only thing we didn't cover today is uh, the outbound process and those are the three areas that uh, a VBC agent is spending their time, right? They're starting off with inbound because those are people waiting at the door, literally, um, wanting to sell you their car. So work on those inbounds. And then we're getting the ICOs taken care of because again, those leads came in. Those are people waiting at your door, trying to sell you their car. Um, and then outbounds are people that are online. And this is really, if you think about it, it's kind of like your, uh, uh, your funnel and your pipeline, right? Um, your funnel is inbound and ICO because those are people that are already in your funnel, you're working them, and your pipeline is your outbound. It's right here. You can see these are all consumers that are saying, hey, I'm trying to sell my car, and you have the ability to click on any one of these cars um, and see how um, good it would be for your lot based on the star rating, and then you can go ahead and start reaching out to them and sending them offers and generating leads um, for your store. So. I hope that was uh, helpful today. I know we covered a lot, but that's why we have an awesome team of performance managers that um, can help you dive in. Again, if you need pay plans, or if you need um, job descriptions, or uh, the intake form, or exit interviews, or any of the CRM connectivity stuff, just reach out. Uh, we'll be posting uh, some of these assets online uh, within Facebook Accelerate so that you have access to it. But thanks so much for being here with me today. And I hope you learned something. Talk to you later.